So I, I work in a, in a small office at the university called uh, Bibliometrics and Data Management. And I'm the project manager of a small team working to build up the data management support for our researchers. And what I'm presenting here today is not DTU's point of view, it's my experience uh, talking to different stakeholders at the university about the concerns on open data versus commercialization and innovation. So tech university of, uh, Technical University of Denmark is a technical university. Therefore, a lot of the things that's going on at university is applied uh, research. And a strategy for actually getting technology and knowledge into the society is collaboration with industry. It's innovation, it's patents, it's entrepreneurship, it's spin-outs from the university and licensing. So sometimes we frame open science as doing actually the same thing, but if you're working at a technical university, I mean, this is still the main idea of how you can actually spread the results of the university for the benefit of society. At DTU, we have more than 1,100 contracts concluded every year with industrial partners and companies. When you compare that to Horizon 2020 funds, which may be around 10% of the total external funding of the university, this is a much larger proportion. Every year, we have more than 150 inventions at DTU. It's uh, wrongly stated here, it's patents. It's inventions, and some of them will turn into patents. So, just to let you think about that, I want to ask a question. I don't know if uh, the system is working yet, but <laughs> otherwise we'll just keep it for the end. But uh, one of the questions would be, what do you think is a better way to transfer technology and knowledge to society? One of the ways that the university have been working to spread this technology and knowledge into society has been collaboration with industry. First, they co-financed research and commissioned research. So commissioned research is where an industrial partner comes to the university and says, we have a problem, can you solve it for us? And um, those contracts are almost always confidential. The results will not be published anywhere. They will be transferred to the partner um, or to the, to, the, to the company, which is, uh, has commissioned the research. And they have the right, which is in the contract, to utilize the, uh, the invention or whatever it is. And because they have the secrecy, they also pay a lot more for it. So there's 180% overhead on commissioned research. A larger proportion of the collaboration with industry is in co-finance research. Here, the collaboration or the research should be of the interest of uh, DTU researchers. Um, and it is also much cheaper because DTU have to have the right to publish the results based on this research. So here the overhead is only 44%. So what are the concerns regarding to open data? So when you get into a contract with a partner, there is a background information or background knowledge that you have that you bring into the project and the industrial partner bring into the project. So a lot of the research that's going on in DTU, they need to have access to data from companies, uh, data that insights from the company, and Often this data cannot be disclosed. It's secret, it's company secrets. So that provides concerns when regards to, to open access to data. Also, even if they want you to give you access or to, give, to provide you the, uh, the possibility to, to, to share this data, to publish this data, there might be copyright concerns that you have to adhere to. And industry partners are not too familiar with concepts like CC0, uh, public domain, uh, CC BY licenses. So that might be a problem. 
Also, when you want to publish something, they will probably have a, 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 a thing in the contract saying that you have to ask, to have a negotiation with them before you actually publish something. This is very normal. Although there are all these problems, it's important not to postpone all these legal questions. And at DGU, we have a number of uh, legal advisors uh, who work together with the researchers to do a balanced contracts with the industry. And they are very aware of the fact that they need to be able to publish, so it's an important issue. But you can't break the trust of the companies either. That's also important, because it's important to have the trust so you can actually collaborate with the companies. There's also the things that will be discovered in the project. So if there's a commission research, I said that will probably be something that will be owned by the company or the partner that you work together with. The other way is, of course, patents. So I made this open science presentation a couple of months ago for our department. We are like 140 people. There are like 12 lawyers, and there are like five tech trans guys. And this tech trans guy come up to me and say like, oh, this open science, you know, our patents. And he was like very afraid. And um, the problem is, of course, that he's concerned that someone would disclose something before the patent has been filed endangering the, the, the novelty of the discovery, which made it impossible to make a patent. And that's typically two months before the patent has been filed, so that embargo period is something you have to respect. Also, they have this other idea of serendipity, so they have to, well, one day someone will discover something from data that no one had discovered when they actually did the project. So you have to be aware of when you publish something in a journal that you're not, you know, making too many perspectives of the potential use of this idea. So another question. Do we think there is a conflict between open data, open science, and this traditional way of commercialization? So there is a tension, that's quite clear. So the researchers, they are asked by the funders to do, um, um, you know, they have to be transparent, that's the responsible code of conduct, and if you can't publish all the data, how can you make sure that the, that the research is reproducible? And also you have to publish with the best journals, and the best journals that require you to, to deposit the data today. So there are all these things the researchers are concerned about, and we have on the other side these uh, tech trans guys, the patent guys that, you know, they want to, make everything as secret as possible. So there is attention. And then there's the other thing coming up, it's like open innovation at the same time, which is sort of a competing way of making innovation to the sort of traditional linear open, or sorry, linear pattern way of doing uh, innovation, which is kind of like, it's more complicated than, you know, than such. I mean, this is happening at the same time in parallel at the university. Some people are working with open innovation, some people are working with patents, some people are working with open science. It's all happening at the same time. We're not all working on one thing. So we have to consider the diversity of uh, the scientific fields, from basic science to applied science, to life science, to other kinds of science, and you know, like computer science where you share your things even though you're maybe very applied because actually doing patents is just like a hindrance. I mean, it takes too much time to actually get the innovation out there, so you do it openly. And also, it's a good idea for every department to have a discussion of a strategy about how they approach innovation strategy and open science. And I have a good discussion with a Finn, actually, who's uh, working in one of our departments at DGU called Biosustain. Uh, that he doesn't really think there is a problem if you have this discussion and you have a clear strategy about it. So I think from the EU point of view that, uh, that it's a good that they change the sort of connotation of all being sort of open, open, open to have the fair principles instead because the important issue here is that we need to manage our data. And then some of it can be open and some cannot be open, but we need to manage our data and we need to invest in that. So. In the end, most of the research that's done by our research at, at DGU, the ideas that's in patents, the ideas that's described in papers, are not worth a lot without the people behind it. 
So in most cases, they will go into industry if it really has to be applied. So that was my presentation about concerns on open science and open data. Thank you very much.